brother. Jay, I am getting so excited for Onward. Like as much as I love the characters that we know and love from other Pixar stories, I am just excited to see another original story. It looks like it's going to be a totally fresh take on a fantasy world that has an absolutely amazing cast and it looks like it's gonna speak to the values of brotherly love. Which for me, you know, like you're my brother and we're a team and I'm really just so proud of how far we've come together. 100% sure this movie isn't going to be tear jerky at all for us. But I also think that this movie is going to be interesting for us specifically because it really opens up a whole new world in the Pixar universe as we currently know it. Fantasy world, fantasy creatures, how is that going to fit in with everything else? Well, a few weeks ago on this channel, we suggested an explanation that we're on an entirely different planet altogether that has kind of adopted human-esque technology after one of the Starliners from BNL and Wally actually landed on the planet and basically just civilized it. If you are big on the Pixar theory, I highly recommend you check it out by clicking the card. That being said, I do find it to be just a little bit strange if there is another planet out there that it happens to be occupied by fantasy creatures that we've actually invented on this planet. Like, did we somehow actually guess what aliens would be like? Which got me thinking, what if Onward is simply someone's imagination? The imagination of somebody who already exists in the Pixar universe and is using this kind of fantastical world to tell about their own experiences. And if it is somebody in the Pixar our universe, then who is it? Who do we already know who lives at home with his mother and doesn't have a father and has a particularly robust imagination for creating stories? Today we discuss whether or not Onward could be Andy's imagination. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and dive right on in. We don't know all of that much about Onward at this moment, other than it takes place in a suburban fantasy world called New Mushroom Tin, which is inhabited by all sorts of different fantasy creatures, including mermaids, gnomes, unicorns, trolls, centaurs, dragons, satyrs, and our main characters, Ian and Barley, who are elves. It seems from the trailer that at one point in time, all of these creatures would have lived in their more natural habitat but technology has arisen and as a result, magic and majesty seems to have kind of crashed and burned. Leaving a society that seems developed and friendly enough, but also a little bit less than magical. Get out of here! Show get up, bro. We also know that the Super Onward brothers are on a quest to find enough magic so they can spend one last day with their father who passed away when they were very young. Which I do think was kind of the starting point for this particular idea. Like, hey, what if it is someone's imagination? And then if it's someone's imagination from the Pixar universe, who could it be? Like, who's the super important character in that universe who just happens to not have a father? Andy. And while I do think that is very important to the story, there is something else I want to cover first. And that is that Andy specifically has a massive imagination. He doesn't just play with his toys. He builds cities out of boxes and takes characters from all walks of life and spins them together into one cohesive tale. And it's crazy. Like we see the story in its more humble form in the opening scene to the original Toy Story. But it's the opening to Toy Story 3 that I actually think is even more important. So even though Andy is playing just with boxes and toys, we get to see what he's actually imagining. Imagining. And it's awesome. It's beautiful and colorful and elaborate. Like when he drops the barrel of monkeys bomb and it explodes into a mushroom cloud of monkeys. Like, oh my God, that's amazing. Also, I feel like I was playing with my toys wrong. Do I have a defective imagination? Anyway, the point is, I feel like that's exactly the kind of world that we're going to be seeing in Onward. It's going to be colorful and elaborate and creative. Except instead of having all of the creatures and characters coming from different walks of life, like he does with the toys, he He's going to have the creatures living different walks of life. Fantasy creatures with technology, cell phones, plastic swimming pools, trash cans. That means they have trash pickup day. Seriously, when was the last time your fantasy
fantasy story included local infrastructure. The point is, I think in order for us to buy into this idea, we all have to agree that the person's imagination that we are going into is elaborate enough to create a world like the one we're going to see in Onward. And I think Andy does that and knocks it out of the park. But moving on from Andy's natural ability to piece together a tale, let's discuss everything else we know about the kid. When we first meet Andy, it's a small family. It's him, his younger sister Molly, and his mom, but there's no father to be seen. And in the beginning, the explanation for this was pretty basic, that humans were hard to animate, and when you did, they usually ended up looking kind of like plastic. Which ironically is a huge part of the reason why all of the characters in the first story that Pixar ever told happen to be made of plastic. I'm from play school. And I'm from Mattel. But the story that we here at Super Carlin Brothers buy into is that Woody was originally the property of Andy's father who shared his name. And he died shortly before the events of Toy Story. If you would like to see our full explanation video about that particular theory, you can do so by clicking the card. It's a good quality tearjerker. And I think this is especially important because Andy, just like Ian, who is on a quest to get one last day with his father, is always on a quest himself to try to fill this father figure role that he's missing. I think it's a huge part of the reason why as a child, Andy connects with his toys the way that he does, especially Woody and Buzz specifically. I think that he actually looks up to them in a way because they represent this male authority figure that he's missing. And he doesn't just figuratively look up to these guys, he also literally looks up to them in the form of the posters that are all over the walls of his room. Which, if you look at the way that his room is laid out, he actually has posters of both Buzz and Woody directly over his bed, and that's when I spotted something kind of interesting. Carved into the top of Andy's headboard, is a moon. Now stick with me, one of the most curious things about the skyline in Onward that tells us that we are no longer on Earth is that it has two moons. And just look at where Andy's bed sits in his room, right next to the window. Now, maybe it's a reach or maybe it makes sense, but can't you just imagine Andy sitting on his bed looking up at this scene? Both at his father figures, Buzz and Woody, in the room with him, and also up to the sky. One moon is with him there on the headboard, while the other sits just outside the window, forever out of reach, but always there just the same. Even just the wallpaper in both of his rooms might suggest that Andy is the type of kid to look upward, both symbolically and literally. In his first room, they are clouds, and in the second, they're stars. Not to mention one of his two favorite toys is a space ranger, and just listen to the first line we ever hear from Woody. Reach for the sky. Now, we of course know within the context of law enforcement that this is code for put your hands up. But to Andy, the kid that looks up to Woody, what do you think this line might mean? Reach for the sky. Through a totally different lens, this sounds a heck of a lot like words of encouragement. Like, can't you just see how in Andy's mind this might start to form a constellation of all of these elements? And so that brings us back to Onward, and you might be thinking to yourself, like, Sure, some of that might make sense, and sure, it pulls on your heartstrings, but Ben, there's still one major problem left out of this whole thing. Andy doesn't have an older brother. And true, I'll admit that I was having kind of a hard time figuring that one out. And my first thought was like, well, hey, maybe he's Sid. I mean, after all, Andy and him were neighbors growing up. They definitely weren't brothers, but it seemed like his dad, while present, kind of wasn't very much of a parent. Not to mention, Barley's van is super reminiscent of the way that Sid used to play with his toys, kind of all pieced together. Seriously, it seems to be primarily held together with duct tape, and I'm pretty sure the gear shift is a screwdriver. Plus, he seems to kind of have that like rocker style that Sid's room seemed to embody. Also, also, Sid does go on to be a trash collector, and that's the connection to local infrastructure we were all looking for, am I right? Yeah, no. I don't think that Barley was meant to represent Sid. I think instead he is meant to represent none other than Woody 
and buzz. Not with his style or sense of adventure or duct tape, but rather in the way that he can serve as a fill-in father figure for Ian the same way that Woody and Buzz do for Andy. I have a very strong feeling that through the events of Onward, we're going to see the kind of like fun, loving older brother actually step up and start to look out for Ian. Not to replace his biological father, but to serve as kind of a stand-in father figure for him to rely on. We know that the boys are on some kind of a quest to find just enough magic to spend one last day with their father, and I'm sure that it's gonna be an emotional train wreck for all of us, and we're gonna be sobbing directly into our popcorn. But at some point, that day is going to have to end, and I think the two brothers will return home united, and Barley will go on to be a person for Ian to look up to. Just like Woody and Buzz, the father figures that are there for for Andy every day. Meant to represent not the moon in the sky, but the one above his bed. Not intended to replace the other, but to serve just the same. And I think there is one last detail that helps bring it all together. Just look at the back window on Barley's van. It's in the shape of a single moon. In a world that would give you every reason for there to be two windows here, there is only one. And I think it's because Barley, just like Buzz and Woody, are meant to represent the moon at his side. Guys, I really love this theory. Ian reminds me so much of Andy if we were kind of seeing his story through his perspective instead of through the perspective of his toys. And as far as the Pixar theory is concerned, I love how this allows Onward to seamlessly fit right back in by kind of celebrating one of the most beloved characters in all of Pixar. Now guys, I know whenever a story is like all inside of someone's imagination or it was all a dream, it can feel kind of cheap and unfair on the side of the writers. Like they sort of just pull the rug out from anything that's meaningful or important that happens in the story because none of it was actually real. But personally, I like to think of this as if Andy himself is the one writing the story and everything that we're seeing just resonates because we know what it all means, because it reflects back on a story that we're already familiar with, with characters we already care about. And guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you would like to see some more Toy Story action from us, you can check out this video right here where we actually tell the story of how Woody originally belonged to Andy's father. Or if you would just like to recap the entire Pixar theory, you can check that video out right here. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.